Welcome everyone to our Sazenkai of this winter practice period, studying the Book of Serenity, coming from East. Coming from East, yeah. yes indeed. The two words shoyo or chongrong means, the word first word means coming from, just coming from, mm -hmm. and then the second word means ease. Beautiful. Yeah, so this is what we're going to be talking about during this meditation instruction. And you got Wendy Square today. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Noah. Light the light. Yeah, light Noah the behind. Light. 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 Yeah. yeah. Thank you so yeah. much for doing this with me. Wendy. Uh, what so a yeah. yeah. So I feel. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Noah gave us this Cadillac setup. You guys can't see it. I'm going to be very spoiled from now on, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> we usually just do it from a computer and now we have this um oh yay <laughs> <laughs> this giant screen so we can see you all and a big camera so you can see us better so so wonderful thank you noah um so we're gonna talk a little bit about just meditation yes. um uh, how we sit um our posture which you know, will really set us up for the day and for the rest of practice period. Um, I see some veterans here. Um, <laughs> I've seen many times and then some new faces who is uh, just beginning meditation. And uh, this is their first. Who is it, who is it here? Who, who here is their first um, practice period with us? Yay. That's Christy. Yay. Welcome. Always great to see new faces. And Emily Jones. Um, and are you guys just if I the, may it is yeah. I want to just remind yeah. everyone it is everyone's first practice it is. period so yeah. it's definitely yeah. my first practice yes, it definitely <laughs> is um but is anybody's like just beginning to practice and uh let's see we have a screen on top mm -hmm. no okay good great either way is great anything you want to say about Nothing. the Please, okay. please. We'll speak in. So Dogen says that our our posture is our practice. And it took me a while to really understand what that means. I still don't totally understand it, but what I feel is that it, he's really talking about embodiment, really being the practice in our bodies. And so setting us up for, you know, with our posture and bringing ourselves into our bodies is so important. And also will help us have less pain right now. Yeah, so we'll start from the top of our heads. Um, our heads are relaxed and on top of our shoulders. And our eyes in this tradition is open, partially, is hooded. It also took me a while to figure this one out. Um, did it take you a while to figure this one out? Yes, although because I began this way, mm. it was a gift. Yeah, And I think for meditators, who've begun in other ways, it's it's a bit of more of a challenge. Yeah. Harder for me was the mudra because oh. I began with a different hand oh. hand mudra. Ah. Yeah, in um yeah. in Jerusalem. But but the hooded eyes were really always mm. a gift. Yeah. A gift. For me it was not. So it might be different for you. Um I had my eyes closed for maybe 10 years. See that's so, it. that's very different. Um, at first it was a little odd, but it, now that I'm used to it, it's just so wonderful to be able to bring myself out of my own head, right. basically, because I'm trapped back there with my clothes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so try it. You know, our eyes are just barely open, looking at 45 degrees down on the floor or uh, at your wall, if you're at your wall. Um, and our shoulders are rolled back and upright. And to support that, our hands are in a mudra in front of our hara. Um, instead of being dragged down, if you're being dragged down, then your shoulders will automatically curl forward and pull you forward. So you want to be upright. And to support that, you want your spine to be loose, but alert. So our spines are naturally in an S curve. Our upper back curves out and then our lower backs curve in. So if you could still have that natural s curve then that is supported by your seat but so we're going to talk about how we sit very soon right. but our spines are just right on top of our pelvis that is 
um, tilted forward so so that your spine, your your lower back can be curved in. So not anything straining, just giving notice to, you know, a little attention to your yeah. back and noticing that, you know, during meditation when you're, you know, maybe wandering off or tired, the first thing I notice is that my lower back starts, you know, collapsing like I'm on the couch. You don't want to do that. So you can just lightly adjust yourself and be like, okay, I'm just going to wake back up and be in an alert and relaxed position, ready for the world, but also relaxed. So let's talk about sitting. Yes. Yes. Please. So we're both <laughs> sitting on chairs right now. So I'll let Wendy talk about sitting on your chair. Beautiful. Yeah. And you know, I particularly asked, I'm, I'm going to look ahead at you, yeah. look right into the mm -hmm. into your homes. I particularly asked Dinan, Wendy, if we could do this together because of the importance for so many of us of finding how to comfortably and alertly sit into a chair. And I, and I said that very deliberately, sit into the body of the chair and join your body to the body of the chair. For me, um, Dinan knows this well, I have uh, both knees, uh, torn menisci. So I, it's when I made the adjustment of after 40 years or more of cross-legged sitting and met a chair, I suffered. I missed the cushion a lot. And I miss the opportunity to have that deep and strong tripod on the ground. So I felt very strongly about making a new adjustment, having a new relationship with the chair itself when I made the, the change. And that made such a difference. So I don't know how many of you are enjoying sitting meditation in a chair, but it is a vital, strong, and absolutely efficacious meditation, I can promise you that, especially if you can greet your chair every day when you come into the room and find a way to be new and fresh with the chair that is supporting you. Here at Upaya, I have a great and secret gift, which is I am practicing and living down in the basement of Upaya House at ground level. And when I open the door, and step into the room, which is a beautiful, small, intimate, cozy Zen den. The first thing I see is this lovely curved chair awaiting me. And it's the same chair that Kastanashi sits in every time he comes to Upaya. So I go to the chair, I check in with Kaz. How are you, Kaz? Chair, do you miss Kaz? I'm a little bigger, but I'm going to sit with Kaz in you. Thank you for supporting me. And, and if it sounds silly and a little frivolous, so be it. But the, for me, this is a heart-to-heart -heart connection with this beautiful wooden chair. Gratitude for supporting me at this stage in my 75 years of life. Stepping up to the chair, and usually I'll rub it first with a, with a um, I do all this. Yeah. So I rub it with a, um, a nice cloth and make sure that it's fresh. Uh, I did bring a, uh, a meditation cushion from home. So I uh, put that on the chair and then greet the chair and find, um, pull it out and sit down. And what's so important here is very much what Dine In was mentioning earlier, finding the support without slumping into the chair. So I sit on the edge of the world. We're standing on the edge and we are definitely sitting on the edge. So I sit on the edge of the chair Find my ease and posture, upright spine, not too stiff, feeling the S curve, feeling the support of the chair. My feet are in front of me, down, not crossed, not behind, not forward, but just very easily knees and legs in alignment. Am I describing it? Yeah, I wonder. Um, and, I, um, and I sit in that way, arms. Now these chairs have arms. I kind of like them because I feel like the arms of the chair, I think the more I'm listening to myself feels a little weird, but I hope you understand the arms of the chair meet my arms. And I like that connection very, very much and feel utterly grateful to be in alignment and communion with the chair. Um, 
I have had to sit on a couch for one after injuring my knee and um, needing to put my leg forward and lift it. Um, I was definitely off camera during that practice period because it, there were quite a lot of adjustments I had to make, but I was present and I made some peace with the couch, which was at home. Um, but if, if possible, please find a chair to, to sit in and support you because um, it's just a little less saggy and more supportive. That, yeah, that's, yeah that's sufficient. Thank you for listening. Yeah. <laughs> That is so wonderful, Wendy, because I'm going to be using a lot of your instructions now for a lot of folks, I think, um, when their bodies change as they, you know, maybe get an injury or right. get older, they have such problems um, moving onto a chair. I know. We're, I mean, it is really nice to sit on the ground. Right. Um, of course. Like you said, the tripod. And there's also an idea that we feel like we need to sit in a certain way and look a certain way. But it's you know, so nice to see that you and Roshi are both sitting on chairs. We have to. And yeah. um, and it's still a strong practice. It's still the same. As right. long as we breathe the chair, right? as long as we honor how we're sitting, as long as we're okay with it. I think that's right. the main thing. Um, as long as we make peace right. with it. So that's really wonderful. And, and truly, it wasn't easy. Yeah. It was a big transition. Yeah, especially after so many years. So many years. Yeah. So, of upright, tough sitting. Yeah. Which is what got me into trouble anyway. It's yeah. my knees. So, <laughs> were, you sitting, with, were you sitting full? Though? I did for years. Oh my God. For years. I can't sit yeah, full. for years. So, we'll talk about that too. Um, I don't know who here sits full lotus. I don't. Um, uh, but it's like two, both your knees on top of the, the other thigh. And that's, we, we can't do it right now. I mean, I can't do it anyway, but um, some people can, and it's, it's wonderful. It's a very stable position. Um, the other one is half Lotus where one knee is on top and one knee is on top of the other thigh and the other uh, knee is on the floor. I don't do that either. <laughs> I do Burmese where one foot, uh, the shins are parallel on, on the ground. So that's how most of us sit, I think. Um, and again, just like sitting on a chair, no problem, however you sit. But what we really want to do is have, if, if you're on the floor, is to have that tripod. So your, your, your butt is on the cushion, right? usually on the front end of the cushion, like so that your your pelvis is tilted forward. So that's why we sit in the front end of the end of the chair and of the cushion so that our pelvis is slightly tilted so that our lower back it can be curved in. And that stable position of both knees um, stabilized on the ground is, gives us a very strong base. Um, and then you can adjust. If you need to, your, your cushion can be lifted and can be a little higher so that your knees and your hips are not strained. So those, those kind of adjustment we can, you know, individually talk about and we can have a little, uh, you know, check in, check yeah. in after yeah. this. Um, and then our mudras, like I said, is this, look at, yeah. look at Wendy's mudra. Do you want to describe it? Yeah. it? No, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So the right hand Oh, can you see? Yeah. The right hand's on the bottom. The left fingers are in the on top of the creases of the right hand. And then the thumbs are just slightly touching, very lightly. So could you demonstrate if you're pushing towards your thumb? Yeah. Because my thumbs are different. But <laughs> so when we get tense, we can do that. That you happens. Make that, the... that looks like the heart that my daughter sometimes makes when I'm leaving. <laughs> Not so that. You want to just lightly touch. Or if we're really sleepy, we might kind of start drooping forward. Yeah. Um, but you want to just slightly touch. Um, and that's one of the points we can check in on with our bodies right. during practice. Um, you know. I also notice when my back gives out, my mudra also kind of just gives out. So you can just check in with your body and that right. gives you a cue. And then you can just lift yourself back up and then get back into the alert and restful position. This is such an intimate a confessional room. But, um, <laughs> what, uh, because I was trained in this mudra, um, from from uh, Son Nakagawa Roshi's tradition. So this mudra, very strong mudra, mm. took me a while to really open up 
and um, my friend, dear Dharma sister, who will be talking tomorrow, Natalie Goldberg, and I, sometimes we imagine that a sheet of paper ready to be written upon is, is going right in between those mm. two fingers. So yeah. you can feel the intensity of, of that, just imagining the thinness, the thickness of a sheet of paper between your two thumbs. And you can feel the electricity of the thumbs with, with that kind of, um, so it's not pressing and also not too big and not slumped. Yeah, so you're not squeezing the paper and right. you're also not dropping it. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And you're yeah, you're not holding it up. It's just moving right through there. Right. Lots of air. So let's see what time is it. Oh, I can't see it on the thing. So okay, great. So let's give it a, a few moments if anybody has any questions about their posture. And then we'll go into a guided meditation and then um take the last few minutes to talk about kinhin and have a few last questions. If, if I may, yeah. um, Dinan, one adjustment that I remember from early, early training mm. was to imagine that there is an egg mm. underneath your armpits so that your armpits are not like this, you know, so you're not all slumped in. So if you feel, as Dinan said, as Wendy said, shoulders back, chest open, mudra lifted, alive, and a little maybe a little banty hen egg underneath each arm um, so that you have a little bit of spaciousness and yeah. you can feel the circularity of sitting and breathing within your posture. I think Christy has a, can you unmute yourself? Hello, thank Hi. you for the instruction. Um, is the mudra, do we rest it on our laps or is it kind of held up? It's right in front of a hara, right? right? So yes. it depends on where, how you're sitting. So this yeah. is an important point. Um, it's right below the belly button, right. the belly but not too far down because then it'll drag your shoulders forward. So And then you'll lean on your legs. And you will we lean know on this. your legs. We know this. So you want to lift it. If your shoulders start getting tight, some people, their upper back starts getting strained because you know, you're know you're kind of getting pulled forward by your arms. You can actually... Um, have a little support you can try it first and see what you need but you can have a you know a folded towel or a right. small cushion there um, if your back and neck gets starts getting strained um, but you can try it first um, just supporting yourself at the hara and then see how that goes and right. then you know as you need it's better if we don't need it but if we do need it that's okay as well of course yeah and then touching the body a little bit or just kind of um, hovering in front, would you say? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I lightly touch. Yes. Yeah, lightly yes. touch the body. So it gives me a little bit of um, a kind of a feedback um, that I know that I want my attention down in my hara. You'll see in, in the meditation instructions that we want to bring our attention down into that spot, into the middle of our body, right below our belly button. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions about the posture? Any last notes about the posture? Mm -hmm. Any last notes about the posture? Think. I think, um, isn't this a beautiful opportunity to be able to body in the body? Yeah. Breath in the breath, mind in the mind. And on this day, beautiful that you've come to, to set your intention to physically join body, heart, and mind together. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So let's let's transition, please. Yeah, Ready? Let's transition. Yeah. So get yourself in your seat. Just give a moment for all these little posture um, tips that we just gave, and just check in with your body for for just a moment. If you're sitting on a chair, just make sure your back is not against the back of the chair if you can, your body upright. And a posture of upright integrity, but also easeful. Your eyes slightly open. Your body relaxed, your mudra in front of your hara, 
feeling yourself settled into your seat. Well, the first few breaths just gather your attention. As you breathe in, draw in all your attention from everywhere that's not here. Maybe from when you first woke up, all the stuff you have to do to get ready. Let that go and bring that, bring all your attention into this present moment as you breathe in. And then dropping that attention you gathered into your body, into this beautiful posture that we just set up. A couple more breaths, just gathering your attention and then bringing all your attention into your body. The visceral sensation of this posture of uprightness, but also coming from ease. Show you. And then for a brief moment, remembering your intention, your unselfish intention for practice. Why are you here? And to make this real, instead of just thinking, we can bring into our mind's eye someone who might be suffering, or a pet, a being, or a person. And feel into your deep intention to relieve the suffering of this one. Your intention to serve. Your intention to alleviate suffering. That's why we practice. See if you can feel this in your body itself. What is the visceral sensation in this posture, in this body? of this intention, this aspiration to serve. Let this sensation of aspiration perfume your practice, all your practice. And then bring your attention to your breath. Your breath that's deep in your body. Your breath that's all the way down in your hara, right behind your mudra, in your lower belly. Letting our attention that's usually up in our heads drop way deep into our bodies. And then we're going to do a breath counting practice. one that can last a lifetime. We're going to count from one to 10 at the end of our out-breath, labeling the end of our out-breath with a number. And then when you get to 10, you can go back to one at the next breath.
And when you feel distracted or notice yourself get off the count, you can just gently bring yourself back. No judgment coming from ease. It's completely normal for our minds to make thoughts. That's what it does. Our practice is to not attach to those thoughts, letting them just float past. But it is a practice. We're used to being attached to the thoughts. So when we catch ourselves doing that, we can just gently bring ourselves back to putting our attention on our breath. Counting the next breath. As you label the end of the out breath with the number, you're letting go of that breath and then welcoming the next one. No attachment. And as you let go of each breath and welcome the next one, you're also letting go of each moment and then welcoming the next moment. You can briefly check in with your posture. How's your spine doing? How is your mudra doing? Making small adjustments as you need. Letting your posture guide you. so that we can be alert and yet totally relaxed, coming from ease.
always guiding ourselves with a grandmother's heart, bringing ourselves back from our thoughts, bringing our posture back into our beautiful position, gently, no judgment. We're just sitting, noticing the passing of each breath, noticing the passing of each moment while completely at ease and alert at the same time. If your attention feels stable, you can let go of counting for the last few moments and just sit, just notice the passing of each moment. And if you feel distracted, you can always go back to counting. And for the moments you can, just notice. Just notice the passing of each moment.
a few more breaths, just noticing. <laughs> Wendy, would you please dedicate the yes. Um, we dedicate the merit of sitting together this morning, um, coming, coming from ease and grounded in gratitude, uh, particularly for me in the core of this room, gratitude for Dine and Wendy and for Koro Noah, who've kept the practice light strong and long, giving us, giving us Upaya Zen Center every morning as we sit in our homes. We come into the circle of the Way Temple. So gratitude for the opportunity to be alive in this being time and to practice together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wendy. So we have a few minutes um, for some questions or comments. And some, do you have any reflections that you're in? You know, the, what came up for me just being present with you is, uh, again, same as with the opening night, what a miracle it is to be this intimate in our practice. Um, you know, from a tradition that faces the wall and turns, uh, you know, faces, we say faces out. You face out when you face the wall. Mm. That's, that's how we describe it huh. in the Japanese tradition, facing out. We always say facing into the wall. but yeah. Right, yeah, that facing sense, out yeah. mean, means facing, you out know. from the zendo. Yes, out yeah. from the zendo. And so having that, having that be the matrix of my practice for decades, um, it is so intimate to be able to face in and be together. And here at Upaya, we we do both. We face into the center to each other and then face out for much of the day and then return in the evening to facing in and the opportunity to be with you this morning and to be next to you. Yeah, yeah really. So honored. Thank you. Thank you. And um, and to feel this extraordinary gift of technology that makes it possible. In these dangerous times where we have no other option, we find a way to adapt and come from ease again and again. So may it be so. We're, it's necessary, so necessary. Let's hear from you. Yeah, I think Karen has a question or a comment. Thank you. Um, I um, accepted this invitation to the Wonder Practice period uh, with great curiosity. Um, I've done many things with through Opaya, but during COVID and since, but not a deep practice like this. And this way of sitting has not been my practice. And so I'm actually, for the first time in years, sitting on a cushion now and returning to just a breath count. And I just, I guess I'm only expressing not a question, but deep gratitude for the gift a beginner's mind and just beginning again and this incredible gentle strong loving instructive encouragement so, so beautiful where Welcome. are you karen pardon where are you and i'm in athens georgia Oh. oh, wow. And I have practice. I've had a practice for a long time, and I have a Dharma teacher. And it's very, my life, I will turn 83 the last day of the winter practice. Oh, oh. wow. Uh, <laughs> and late coming to this, um, I don't know that I'll ever be in a real Zendo, but um, being in the cloud, the <laughs> Zendo, and the practice, and the teachings, and um, the language has um, altered the landscape in which this life has lived through me. So I'm deeply grateful. Oh. Thank so you. Beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. How uh, inspiring. Yeah. And it's so wonderful that the, the cloud sandal can serve some. And it's so great to be able to connect. I, that's how I feel. Oh. Yeah, what a gift. Thank you, Noah. Yes. <laughs> He's behind the screen. <laughs> We're facing him. But... Yes. 
and you're in, and you're you're saying we're sandwiched between uh -huh. <laughs> so that's really good yeah any other questions or comments no problem if not we can talk a little bit about kinhin right. yeah um so it's uh 6 48 so in the zendo we're going to be starting kinhin in a couple minutes and it took me a while to understand that one too. Right. I'm like, why are we walking so slowly? It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> but um, after doing it a while, I really, at least for me, understand that it's a very important practice of bridging our um, sitting practice of taking this what this what we're cultivating right. in sitting into a moving body, right. um, into our bodies that are moving through space in a controlled way so that we can still take right. our practice with us so that we can practice doing it anywhere. Right. Um, is that what your experience is? Or what Very definitely. Saying? And especially a turning point for me was actually practicing for so many years with Thich Nhat Hanh, oh, yeah. where That's we of... is stepping into practice mm. um, and really put paying attention deeper attention to keen hin mm. what what, do, what are the characters do you know kodo uh, he's going to look it up I he's he'll look it up <laughs> um yeah i mean i i always thought it was very weird to walk so slowly why are we doing that right. but that was when i was in new york where i was walking extremely fast everywhere <laughs> and not really noticing where my body is right and so this is um kind of an antidote to that fast movement right um, and learning how to slow down have attention in my body one breath right. one step um, not trying to go anywhere either yeah. we're really definitely not going anywhere um, walking around the zendo and um, the way I do it is I breathe out as I step mm. down yes. letting myself go into the ground and then as I lift the other foot up I I breathe in and then breathe out, and then breathe in, breathe out, slowly, one breath, one, one step, step, one breath. Geng yeah. hang. Um, yeah, kin hin is geng hang. It kind of means walking. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of means like walking in a line, kind mm -hmm. of walking in a path. Um, and if you have space at home, uh, please do it with us. Um, of course, if you know when during Kinhin, you can also take care of your body, right? Go However you need to, but still keep that state, right? Don't let yourself start be together. rushing. Yeah, let's be together and still doing Kinhin, walking right. to the bathroom, and yeah. um, taking things slow, coming from ease. Right. Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, again so intimate, especially for me this morning to be looking into the home of Ginny McGinn, whom I practiced with for so many years, and knowing how fully and thoroughly she works and serves in the world, and just feeling a huge amount of joy thinking of you in your study. You know, really becoming uh, one with the Zendo and joining, coming home to New Mexico too. As you're sitting, yeah. So, um, nice and the, and the stepping in is really stepping in, feeling your space, the room that you're in, fresh. One step, one breath. The room, the room is the the. I don't know how to actually say this, but I I feel it so. I feel it in this room. I feel it looking into your rooms. Just the life uh, force and the intentionality of our dedication this morning is. Inf infuses the room that you're in, if you will. And I want to say, Dainan, uh, excuse me, Thich Nhat Hanh thought we should do slow walking in New York. And so we did in the subway, slow walking, wow. getting near to the subway. And people looked at us like, what? <laughs> but to our amazement, almost every time we did slow walking outside, people joined us mm. and said, who are wow. you? Where are you going? Can mm. I stay with you? May I oh, walk wow. with you? May I slow down with you? Mm. So never doubt the importance of that. Yeah. Such an antidote to our rush. It really is. Well, I remember Roshi always tells that story of the of the march that Yes. Yeah. Right. In New York City. In New York City. And I was 
Oh, you were it was there. part of that march. Wow. Yeah. So oh, I wish I would I could have a time machine and go back <laughs> to that, but unfortunately I'll try to experience it in our snow walk. Right. Yeah. And and also bring the same practice. Like we're, you know, and noticing our breath. Oh, oh here they go. <laughs> and the beautiful long-tailed black cat too. It's yeah. Sitting and uh, Ruth's cat. Mm -hmm. And Emily's rabbit. <laughs> it's our animal selves. These are we are strong and long in animal selves. Yeah. So so I think we're out of time. Out of time. Um, or we have tons of time, but out of time. Right. Time, not our time. Yes. Right so we'll uh, switch back to the Zendo. And I think they they have started Kinhin. If you'd like to join them, please do. Um, and if you have any questions, um, anything that comes up for you, you can write to us through online programs at upaya.org and they'll forward us the email. Um, and we can we can have a conversation. Um, so thank you very much. So much gratitude and have, please have enjoy this practice period coming from ease. Thank you so much for being with us. Yay. And Noah <laughs> is there too. Thank <laughs> you.